So let me give you three examples of how you can arrive at depth perception from vision alone. Um, a classical approach and two that rely on neural networks. So here's a video going down, I think this is San Francisco, of a Tesla. So this, these are our cameras, our sensing, and we're looking at all, I'm only showing the main camera, but all the cameras are turned on, the eight cameras of the autopilot. And if you just have this six second clip, what you can do is you can stitch up this environment in 3D using multi-view stereo techniques. So this, oops. Uh, this is supposed to be a video. Is it not a video? Well, oh, I know it's a oh, video, there we go. There we go. <laughs> So this is the 3D reconstruction of those six seconds of that car driving through that path. And you can see that this information is purely, is, is very well recoverable uh, from just videos. And roughly that's through process of triangulation and as I mentioned, multi-view stereo. And we've applied similar techniques, uh, slightly more sparse and approximate also in the car. So it's remarkable, all that information is, is really there in the sensor and just a matter of extracting it. Um, the other project that I want to briefly talk about is, as I mentioned, there's nothing about neural network. Neural networks are very powerful visual recognition engines. And if you want them to predict depth, then you need to, for example, look for labels of depth, and then they can actually do that extremely well. So there's nothing limiting networks from predicting this monocular depth except for labeled data. So one example project that we've actually um, looked at internally is we use the forward-facing radar, which is shown in blue, and that radar is looking out and measuring depths of objects, and we use that radar to annotate the, uh, what vision is seeing, the bounding boxes that come out of the neural networks. So instead of human annotators telling you, okay, this, this car in this bounding box is roughly 25 meters away, you can annotate that data much better using sensors. So you use sensor annotation. So as an example, radar is quite good at that distance. You can annotate that, and then you can train a neural network on it. And if you just have enough data of it, this neural network is very good at predicting those patterns. So here's an example of predictions um, of that. So in circles, I'm showing radar objects and, in, uh, and the cuboids that are coming out uh, here are purely from vision. So the cuboids here are just coming out of vision, and the depth of those cuboids is learned by a sensor annotation from the radar. So if this is working very well, then you would see that the circles in the top-down view would agree with the cuboids, and they do. And that's because neural networks are very competent at predicting depths. Uh, they can learn the different sizes of vehicles internally, and they know how big those vehicles are, and you can actually derive depth from that quite accurately. The last mechanism I will talk about very briefly is uh, slightly more fancy and gets a bit more technical, but it is a mechanism uh, that has recently, um, there's a few papers basically over the last year or two on this approach, it's called self-supervision. So what you do in a lot of these papers is you only feed raw videos into neural networks with no labels whatsoever, and you can still learn, you can still get neural networks to learn depth. And it's a, bit, a little bit technical, so I can't go into the full details, but the idea is that the neural network predicts depth at every single frame of that video, and then there are no explicit targets that the neural network is supposed to regress to with the labels, but instead, the objective for the network is to be consistent over time. So whatever depth you predict should be consistent over the duration of that video, and the only way to be consistent is to be right. And so the neural network automatically predicts the correct depths for all the pixels, and we've reproduced some of these results internally, so this also works quite well.